Welcome to a special edition of the Municipal Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. Today, we are going to be diving into a topic that has been making waves this week in the municipal landscape of Alberta. An article by Matthew Black in the Edmonton Journal earlier this week has ignited a spark in the ongoing conversation about the introduction of political parties into the municipal scene. Now, the article suggests that more than 70% of respondents to an online Province of Alberta survey are against the idea of adding party labels alongside names of candidates on the municipal election ballot. Now, that is a significant majority, and it raises some crucial questions about the direction of our local politics heading into the 2025 general municipal elections here in the province. Now, according to the data acquired by Post Media, more than 4,600 respondents, amounting to about 60.8% of all replies, strongly disagreed with the statement of adding political parties into the municipal scene. A further 728 responses or 9.5% disagreed with the idea entirely. Fewer than one in four respondents indicated support for putting party names on the municipal ballots. Now, to help us unpack this issue and understand the implications for municipalities, we have a special guest with us today, Edmonton Councillor Andrew Knack, who serves as a director of cities over 500,000 for Alberta Municipality. He will join us to share his insights on this newspaper article and the potential impact for municipalities bargaining with the province around this issue. This is Municipal Affairs. Councillor Nack, thank you so much for doing this. I want to start by talking about this week's uh, newspaper article in the Edmonton Journal by Matthew Black, where the uh, Post Media did a FOIP request on the survey results from the province of Alberta. And in the FOIP, in the result and in the article, it said that the uh, respondents, 60.8% of respondents, did not want the introduction of political parties into the municipal arena. What's your initial thoughts on that uh, from an um, Alberta municipality standpoint? Not a surprise. That's very much aligned with the survey results that uh, we received when Alberta municipalities commissioned a poll through Janet Brown back in the fall. Uh, it showed just over two thirds of Albertans uh, do not like the idea of introducing political parties into municipal government. And the survey that just came out, uh, as, as you mentioned, 60, a little over 60% strongly disagree with that and, and another nine and a half uh, disagree with it. So actually a little over 70% of people disagree or strongly disagree with that in the provincial government's own survey. And, and that's very much aligned with what we've seen and heard over the years. Every time this idea gets sort of floated out there, uh, Albertans come back over and over again and say, no, this is not what we're interested in. Uh, nobody's asking for this. And, and so please don't proceed. So what if they do proceed? Because we saw last week as well, uh, by the time this uh, comes to air last week, uh, Rick Bell of Sun Media, or of Post Media down in Calgary, uh, was talking to the Premier and then there was potential of this introduction. Now that these survey results are unofficially out in the public because they still have not been fully released by the province of Alberta, um, does this give Alberta municipalities sort of a bargaining chip to say don't do it you have your own results and you your own results are saying we don't want it as an entire province yeah, yeah i mean i i'd almost I, i'd almost sort of change the word it, it's not really so much a bargaining chip as it is just clear uh information from albertans so it's not that we we should have to go into a a negotiation with the province of saying well if you're trying to do this maybe do it this way instead no, Albertans have said over and over again they don't want this, and and so they should respect the wishes of Albertans. They should respect uh, what they've heard from groups like Alberta Municipalities. Uh, we're not the only organization to have been talking about this over the years. Uh, so so I think really it's this this shouldn't be a matter of you know what's a modified version of this look like with these results. You know, to date, we still don't know what pro problem the province is trying to solve here. They have not at all been clear about why they're even entertaining this idea in the first place. And so if they've got a problem they want to solve, instead of jumping to a solution that clearly nobody wants, let's actually work together with Albertans. Let's work together with organizations like Alberta Municipalities and, and RMA uh, to come up with solutions for whatever problems that they have that they feel are important and worth addressing. 
Now, weeks after the survey launched in October, you, along with members of Alberta municipalities, put out a call for action. You had a press conference where you put out a call for action because you said the last time the LEA and the MGA were both reviewed, the survey only got approximately about 4,000 survey respondents. Now, again, I cannot confirm because I do not have the public information available to me, but 7,680 respondents for this question alone came in and responded to this question. Are you happy that that is a good, accurate sort of cross-section of Albertans, or would you want it to have seen that higher? Because 7,600 in a population of 4.3 is still not a lot of Albertans who are interested in this topic. It's true. And and so I, I think if this had been the only time there have ever been engagement on this, uh, you know, you'd be concerned because an online survey is is a self-selecting survey. Um, but it happens to align with statistically significant surveys like from Janet Brown. And, and let's let's you know, let's re- remember, like Janet Brown is the best in the business when it comes to polling in Alberta. She is almost always perfectly bang on her numbers almost directly aligned with what the province heard. There have been previous surveys by other organizations in the past. And so I I think if it had just been this survey, you could try to, you know, say, well, it was an online survey and, and, you know, maybe those who are most interested filled it out, but it's, it, it actually reinforces what we've heard time and time and time again. And so I think for me, I'm not concerned with the number. I'm. I look at the percentage, and over and over again, we've seen the same call from Albertans, typically in the order of two thirds to seventy percent, saying, "No, party politics isn't the right thing in municipal elections. It's not going to add value, and in fact, it's probably going to hurt our local democracy more." Uh, this was a topic of much discussion at the most recent Alberta Municipalities Conference in September of last year, where the overwhelming, and I say overwhelming of respondents, 80% said, no, we don't want to. Now that this report has come out, this article has come out, are you speaking to your colleagues across Alberta and sort of trying to figure out what the best path forward now is for sort of ensuring that this res- this survey or the responses that the survey got are adhered to by the province. Yeah, I think that's that's the important next step here. You know, my my hope is that the province is is going to see those results like they've seen every other survey on this and say, you know what, that this is not the right direction. People don't want this, and and because we haven't clearly communicated what problem it is we're even trying to solve maybe we should hold off on on trying to make any change like this. But we have a responsibility, I think, as an organization, as Alberta municipalities, because our members have said very loud and clear that they also want uh, to make sure this doesn't happen, that we need to really push hard. Um, because, you know, I, I've also read the articles that suggest that, you know, it's coming whether you like it or not. And, and you know, I, I hope there doesn't have to be a, a, a fight about this. You know, I always I always like I always hate when politicians say I'm going to fight for you, you. But but truly, this is something that pretty much the vast majority of people do not want. And so if there has to be a fight over it, then then, you know, we'll 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 keep advocating. We'll being very vocal. But preferably, I think this will just be something that groups like Alberta municipalities can come out and say, listen, yet again, <laughs> the results are clear. Uh, let's let's put this idea to bed and then let's work together because that's really the best way forward, right? I, and and I mean, that's sort of the beauty of municipal politics and I think why people don't want party politics because we have people on the Alberta Municipalities Board who are across the political spectrum. We are not all <laughs> from the same political ideology uh, and, you, and that's the same for municipal councils across this province. And yet, overwhelmingly people from across the political spectrum say this isn't the right thing because we get to live the world where we don't have to be in partisan politics every day we get to actually see where we get to come together with people from different ideology learn from one another listen to one another one another and make better decisions because of it and so i think that's what we want to do in a situation like this if the province has a problem they're trying to solve Let's do the same thing we do each and every day in each of our municipalities, which is work together across partisan ideology and figure out the best way forward. 
I, I need you to take your director's hat off for a second and put on your counselor's hat on for a second because um thank you. Um there we go. Most most people I speak to say that this would help level the playing field in the larger two cities of our province, Edmonton and Calgary. Uh, we are seeing sort of uh, the premier sort of focus on those two areas because those are with the most seats and they need sort of an ally in their corner. What is the major opposition that you as a city councillor have to this proposal? Because to me, and I'm playing devil's advocate with you here for a second, councillor, it doesn't seem far-fetched. It doesn't seem like something I'd go, okay, we have it provincially, we have it federally. What's another step? Just add it municipally and level the playing field for all candidates and not just the ones who have been elected so often. I think there's three things. So I think first I, I turn the question around a little bit to say, you say it's already provincially, it's already federally. And, and I guess I turn the question around and say, how's that working out right now? Like, Truly, and I say that sort of jokingly, but look at our federal system right now. Look at our provincial system right now, where the partisan system thrives on division. It thrives on trying to make somebody else the enemy. And therefore, you are unwilling to even engage with the person on the other side because they are the enemy. I am the one in power or vice versa. I'm the one out of power. They're the one in power. I have to fight them every step of the way. That's the system we live in right now, provincially and federally. Does anyone look at that and say, this is working really well? So let's start with that question, right? I mean, that again, back to the question of what problem is it or, that we're trying to solve here? Because if it's trying to bring civility into politics, uh, that's not happening provincially and federally. We do it far more each and every day municipally. But let's go to your point around fairness. And I, and I think we really need to dig into that because remember today, if somebody wants to, they can run as a slate. There is nothing stopping any organization, any group of people to say, next municipal election, we're going to run as a collection of people on a similar platform and bring that message out. What's different is that you're still bound by the same rules, meaning you can't share voter lists between each other. You can't share financial resources. So from a fairness perspective, everyone is still equal in that sense. If I want to run as an independent, I'm not put at a disadvantage because somebody's chosen to run into a, in a slate because they can't share resources. Now, you can argue some of that clearly happens. You've seen that. I mean, we've heard stories of people getting access to voter lists, but there are laws in place that prevent that and people should be held accountable if they're breaking it. Let's go and, and actually really lean into that scenario. So let's say you truly implement this in a more significant way than today, which is, which is what is allowed as slates and so folks could do it. But what then what happens if you allow everyone to share resources? What happens if a party can provide funding to a slate? What if I want to run as an independent? I'm now at a disadvantage because I don't have access to the party resources that are being shared amongst candidates. So actually, from a fairness perspective, it is less fair to people who want to run as an individual because they would not have access to the party. So I think that's a really important thing to highlight is that if we're looking for fairness, the system we have today is the most fair because any person in the city of Edmonton, all you need to run is get 25 people from the ward that you wanna run in to sign a nomination paper and you gotta pony up a hundred bucks. While that's, you know, hundred bucks is still a lot of money to some people, realistically, almost anyone can do that and get their name on a ballot. Does that if make democracy parties, better, though? Yeah. I mean, again, go look at every every local municipality. Yeah, there are some bad examples. We, you know, <laughs> there there have been a story where the minister had to intervene in, in Chestermere. And, and but but those are the exception to the rules. Look how well most municipalities operate. I was just uh, just out doing some more tours, uh, where, you know, wearing my Alberta municipalities hat again for a second. Um, you know, I went out to the village of, of Vilna, I went out to the village of Glen, Glendon and the town of Bonneville, and I met councillors there who clearly have different political ideology. You know, they, they were, didn't necessarily publicly share it, but you could sense from the talk, just like you could sense where I am when you've talked to me about where I might generally at fall. But those were very cohesive groups that even when they had different perspectives, were working towards common goals. And... 
And when you remove that, when you say, all right, now the party's introduced, this is where the biggest, this is the third issue, I think, that we really need to drive in, drive home on this, which is that in the survey that Alberta municipalities did, they asked the question uh, about how what percentage of people would agree with the statement that uh, candidates, if elected as part of a party, would vote in the what the party was saying versus the best interests of the residents. Unsurprisingly, the majority of people who didn't want to see party politics said that is a major reason why they don't want party politics, because they believe that the person that would be elected would be doing what the party said and not what the people who elected them said. That was in the order of about 92 percent. But here's the fascinating thing. With, even within the small minority of people who like the idea, 60% of that group also believe that the person who would be elected would follow what the party is saying and not what the people who are electing them are saying. And that that is it. Like, there it is. Even those who love the idea saying that's what would happen. Because, again, look provincially, look federally. That's what happens. You can't vote against the party. If you go against the party, you're getting kicked out. You know, maybe you try to figure out a way to not be in attendance that day on the vote that you really don't like, but you can't go and speak up about it then. You can't go and 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 say, I disagree with the party on this. And while I generally support them, I disagree on this particular issue. And here's why I do. We get to do that every day because we don't have a party telling us what to do. And so uh, you know, if you if we know we we have plenty of examples of what happens when you introduce partisanship, we also have great examples of what happens when you don't. And I think the vast majority of Albertans, and I think why the surveys have always been coming back the way they have, is because Albertans see what happens locally, and then they see what happens provincially and federally, and says even if I don't like my local representative, I'd still rather this system than the one that's currently broken. What's the next steps now? Now that this uh, the unofficial numbers are coming out, we still don't know the full results because we're only seeing a snippet of the report. Uh, but there are other things in that those surveys that I'm interested in, uh, mm -hmm. especially around the background, what people are thinking about. So what's the next step for Alberta municipalities and you as an elected official looking at these numbers trickling out? I think the next thing is, again, you're, you're right. There were some some questions in those surveys about changes to the rules that actually would help make uh, the folks that uh, run elections that their lives much easier. There are some things that actually need to be changed, some, some smaller things that I think can be implemented in time for this election. I think what needs to happen is that those things that where there is general agreement about some simple rule changes to help make the administering of elections easier, let's get those done. I, you know, we haven't been concerned about that you know, there's there's some nuance in every every uh, point, but uh, but generally speaking, I think there's a there's a a way forward on those. But where we have clear clear opposition, let's take a step back, say, hey, we, we don't <laughs> we don't need to solve this problem in 2025, whatever the problem is. Let's take a step back and say, hey, Alberta municipalities, hey, RMA, hey, Albertans, we believe this is a problem articulate whatever the problem is, we would like your help to solve it. So then let's spend the next couple of years trying to solve what it is. If they want to get higher voter turnout, which we all want in municipal elections, let's see what we can do. Because clearly having parties in Vancouver and Montreal doesn't generate higher voter turnout than what we see here in Edmonton or in Calgary or in any local municipalities. So so again, let's figure out what, what it is they want to fix and then let's say, let's all come together in a room and, and figure it out. Let's work with Albertans who, who are smart enough to provide great ideas. Every time the city of Edmonton goes through changes to election rules, it's not led by the elected representatives. Because no matter how well-intentioned you are, you clearly have a bias. We always have independent citizen commissions. So when the ward boundaries got redrawn, it was an independent citizen commission that came forward that worked on that, that developed recommendations, and then were adopted by council. There's great models of empowering the people who we are serving to say, help us come up with the most fair system. Help us come up with ways to make things better, to get people more engaged. Let's use the talents of all Albertans to figure out whatever it is we need to figure out. Again, with at this point, we don't know what the problem is we're trying to solve.
Andrew, it's always a pleasure to sit down with you and chat with you. I've taken up probably a little bit more time than I, uh, you probably were expecting, but thank you so much for doing this. Uh, as I said, we have not been able to independently confirm the result numbers, but we're going by what uh, Edmonton Journal has reported, and we believe them uh, in, the, in the, as much as we can because we always like to triple check everything. But uh, last word to you before I let you go. What do you do now? What do you do now to try and get this on a radar? Because from my standpoint, 7,600 people filling out a survey is not uh, a good cross-section of Albertans, and we need more people talking about this. Besides doing interviews like this, what else do you need to do? And I think it is very much just being very vocal about this. Again, I would like to believe, and and I, I've seen, you know, I've worked with Minister McIver now for a while. He is a... I, and I've spoken very highly of him. I think he's a very good minister. I am, I'd like to believe, especially as somebody who is a former local elected representative in the city of Calgary, that he's going to see those survey results and say, we're done. There's no point in going forward with this. If for some reason he's getting pressure above him, you know, which I guess would really at this point only come from the premier's office. If there's other pressures that are still trying to force this forward, then it is important that elected representatives like myself and organizations like Alberta municipalities are being very vocal and making sure Albertans know that there's that there's a possibility that somebody could still be pushing ahead with a change that nobody's asking for and making sure that they're speaking up and using their voice. Because it's one thing for an organization like Alberta municipalities to speak up and organize and other organizations. It's something entirely different for Albertans who have spoken up in every survey when they're asked and said, we don't want this, but let's make sure this doesn't fall you know, by the wayside when there are a lot of other issues on the plate right now. We're talking about pension plans and and, you know, there's going to be, you know, there's lots of other legislation and bills and policies that, that can come out that can capture a lot of people's attention. Local elections can sometimes not be the most exciting. So we want to make sure people are well aware that this is being talked about and to use your voice to say, we've said it over and over again, we don't want it. Please don't advance it. You've got more important things to be dealing with right now in the province of Alberta than advancing an idea that nobody's asking for that's trying to solve a problem that nobody knows what problem you're trying to solve. So let's be vocal. But I I, I love, I, I'm still maybe naively optimistic here. I'd like to believe I have faith in the process that the Minister of Municipal Affairs, who knows this, who's been in both sides of provincial and municipal, has heard Albertans loud and clear and isn't going to proceed with something that Albertans haven't been asking for. Uh, it's always a pleasure, Andrew. Thank you so much for doing this. Anytime. Thank you. If today's episode has sparked your interest in learning more about municipal governments, hit the subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all of our diverse content that we have here on the Municipal Affairs or even on the cross-border interviews where we speak with municipal leaders from coast to coast to coast or our in-depth analysis of local governments on the political trenches, local government at work. Now, we are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as well-engaged. Now, your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of the top-notch content that you have come to love. Now, if you can, consider backing the show. Every little bit goes a long way in amplifying the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.